there's obviously challenges that an athlete might encounter with timelines. They obviously, have, we heard Bella talked about it, we heard in the last panel, they want to get back in as soon as possible. So how, from an athletic care provider perspective, can you ensure that they get back to returning to play with confidence? Yeah, and that's a really good question. I think I'm just going to echo kind of what's been said already today by multiple people. So, um, and Michael, you've made my job a little bit easier by <laughs> outlining a lot of those uh, phases because I think I see it more as that continuum as well rather than kind of uh, dead stop phases or stages. Um, and that's, I think, where athletes get caught is when they are no longer allowed to like progress. Um, they are told, okay, you didn't pass this X test at this phase. Now you are stuck in this phase. Um, whereas there are a lot of other things that potentially could be used to progress that person forward. Um, and I think it really comes down to um, looking at not only just like those kind of sensory, cognitive, and physical components, but the psychosocial components of what's going on in that person's life and that Bella alluded on is that the sense of self is then, you know, if you're everything that you were doing maybe for like 60, 70% of sometimes 80% of your week um, has now been removed and you're no longer able to continue those activities. Um, then that also takes a big hit on that individual's sense of self. Um, and so we see like de uh, deep personification, that kind of thing come up too as well as they lose the value. Um, maybe they can't even go to school and perhaps that also is a big component of, you know, maybe they're in their final year of high school and they are in sport and they are, you know, in academics and they, you know, there is progressions you need to meet in life to just move into university or things like that um, that I often encounter. And I think um, the the athletes or patients that I typically encounter are the ones that are sort of like have maybe exhausted their immediate resources and come see me when they've hit these roadblocks. Um, and so for those people, we kind of go back to the basis of looking all of those components individually um, and try to break them down again because maybe they've just maybe overshot something um, and maybe it's vision or maybe it's another piece that just maybe wasn't addressed properly from the start. And that's where a multidisciplinary team comes into play, um, whether it is from an optometry standpoint that I do work quite closely with and I know my barriers of where I refer on those um, as well as from a mental health perspective um, maybe it is speaking with coaches and other um, components of strength and conditioning depending on the level of sport you're in um, and so I think what happens is from what I've encountered anyways once we break down those processes again we start to rebuild them and sort of layer them back in like he's referring to your cake analogy there as well um, and so I think as a therapist is the understanding of when to layer and maybe when to scale down. Um, but looking at that kind of, I think it was like a mountain uh, image in that um, last talk by Jeremy there, um, of kind of staging it as like there's plateaus in some parts where you might be in that stage for a while, but there's maybe a lot of different things we can do there. Um, so maybe if they can't do the Buffalo concussion treadmill test, maybe we find another mode of exercise that they can do in that time or a different activity that they can start doing to kind of facilitate some of those things uh, rather than being like, okay, if you can't do this, then you're just going to be back to nothing. Um, there has to be things that we can figure out that, that person can do. Um, so we don't just remove their person, everything kind of valuable to them at that time. There's got to be something we can reintegrate and sort of um, add that sense of self back in um, because then we reduce the incidence of those mental health concerns kind of impeding injury. And so some of the things that maybe predict that difficulty in recovery could be the initial onset um, burden of symptoms or severity of symptoms, but also things like previous mental health concerns or maybe learning concerns or maybe it's visual concerns that those things start to interact or maybe they reemerge a little bit more prominently post-concussion and maybe they were already there. Um, so it's really identifying like maybe the person in front of you and what's going on kind of in their life cycle socially as well as competitively and maybe academically. Um, and understanding like what you can strategically do at each phase um, and then how you kind of layer it in. So as I educate clinicians, um, from understanding kind of the basics and fundamentals of those cognitive pieces, of the sensory pieces and the motor pieces and how all those things work together because our brain doesn't operate in silos. I think one of the things I've always said is we have to kind of break down those silos at some points in rehab um, and start to integrate. And so strategically learning how to integrate and monitor and also have open communication with the person so that if they start to run into difficulties, like maybe, okay, we've actually returned to some sport specific activity, but we didn't maybe encounter the fact like in the clinic, I can't replicate a 60 minute practice, for example. So 
you know, maybe we did a bunch of tests, they did exertion, they did all this stuff, but then, you know, at the end of practice, their coach decided to do sprints. Um, and there's quick turns, there's high intensity, and then they start to get dizziness and things, and they start to catastrophize, like, oh my gosh, I'm going backwards. Um, but really, it's just something like a new exposure, a new stress that we haven't uncovered yet, and we just have to be confident and, again, it's like educate and keep kind of in line with them and make sure that they understand that it's just another kind of stressor we're exposing to and we just have to rebuild resiliency and capacity for those things.